I'm hoping you have already watched the the gnome video that I did with my cousin Joni where she showed me how to make a gnome. You know, you can take that and just run with it, do, do anything you want. But um, one thing I was thinking about is that a lot of people, like this season is um, past the gnome Christmassy snow boot season. So I was going to make some snow boots or gnome boots. So I made these out of leather. And so I was gonna show you how to make these. And I have made another gnome. It's not quite finished, but I put a, I did a sock. The, the second part of the sock that I used, I made a little sweater for him and it's got the ribbing on the bottom. So it kind of created like a little collar. You don't see the front of it, so you can just turn it out and make a collar for him. But there he is, he's got his little furry, beard and his sock nose which I used one of those pads that you used to try on shoes in the, in the shoe store. I don't know if you can do that anymore but and then a little bit of ultra suede for the hands. I used some old, I cut up some old um, stockings from dollar store, used the fur off of that and so this guy we just have to kind of plump up his little bottom there and glue the shoes to the bottom. So he's gonna look like this. He's gonna have his little shoes on. I'm not gonna make the legs like my cousin did, but um, he's gonna have his little shoes, his le leather shoes. There's so many different themes you can do with these guys. This one I use purple velvet. I made his arms a little more chunky. So what I'm going to do is show you how I made these shoes, these little boots. When I finished making that gnome, <laughs> I just couldn't stop giggling. I think some kind of little gnome spirit embodied him and he just made me giggle. Gosh, these guys are so darn cute. I just don't know what to tell you about them. They're so cute. I still have to put a little white ball on top of that, but um, pretty much he's pretty much done, except I gotta get his shoes on there. I made him a little sign. I gotta get a chalk pen to do that and then I'll, he'll be finished. So that's my little gnome guy that I finished. Next I'm gonna make, I have this fabric. I bought this blouse at a thrift store. It's really beautiful. I'm always looking at velvets. And so I'm going to use this pretty shiny indigo blue velvet with silver swirly sparkles on it. I'm going to make a wizard gnome. So if you want me to, if you want to see me make that, make a comment below. Now I'm making leather shoes. Since these shoes are leather, and I've got the bottoms and everything like that, and then I just tied some hemp string on there, and all I did was use toilet paper rolls, or you can use paper towel rolls. These are a little easier to cut, I think. And then I just have a piece of sturdy cardboard here that I sort of make the bottom template for. And then I made a pattern like this. And I'll show you how I did that. And basically what this is, is for the, you cut the leather, you cut your leather out and this just kind of wraps around the front of the shoe like that. And then the only other piece is going to be a piece similar to this. And I hot glued it together and it fits right over the top. And then because it has a lot of hot glue in it, you can trim that to kind of fit. But this one was, a, this piece was a little small, so I needed to make it a little bit bigger to go here. 
the you want to make it a little bit overlapping so you do have some give where you can trim it back a little bit and you want it to be able to come back far enough to cover the edge you see of that other piece and then I just tied a little embellishment on there and I just decided to tuck it down inside. Now I get these leathers from furniture stores and if you know anybody that works for a furniture store, a lot of times they discontinue things and they get rid of old upholstery fabrics and old leathers or you can buy your leather at the, the craft store. You can also use ultra suede or some kind of heavy duty fabric, even a corduroy or a flannel shirt. Once you have your pattern made, you can make anything. So I'll show you. The first part you're going to want to do is, I have two of the, I'm going to use, basically you can just cut it right down the middle. Like that and then just cut it in half. Base, you want them to be about the same height, so you might have to trim one of them. And this one. Then you're going to make that for the top of your boot. Now, see this boot, it's about, that's about the height of this boot. So you're gonna hot glue that. You're gonna try to make them as close to the same size as you possibly can. And then we're gonna cut a couple of strips about like this. glue gun ready. You can always trim that. So you're gonna to wanna to make this little pattern. So you got your basic boot shape. You want to hold that and then I just kind of bend it in. Bend it in a little bit like that. I'm going to make sure they're about the same size. And I will just cut this out.
So I've got a pattern drawn, but I'm gonna cut a little bit bigger than that because you can always trim it later. In fact, you probably don't even have to do this, but. Two shapes like that. And then I'm just going to hot glue to the bottom. And then we'll just trim that off after it sets. Now we can make our pattern. And here I used a napkin, just used a napkin for that. As long as your glue is dry, you just wanna cut a strip about the height of the boot, just a little bit taller because this is going to wrap around like this. And when you get to that part, that's where you cut it, right there. And this will just wrap around like that. So we need two pieces of that on the leather, or just cut it. And then flip it over, do another one. So you have two. This one you see has been cut. I just leave, just leave that and you'll cut it later. And then you need two like this. And we're gonna make it a little bit longer. So you're gonna go up one side and we can double our, double the leather. and make it a little bit bigger than what you thought. So I'm gonna hold it here. And you need two sets of that. So I have two sets like that. Now I'm just going to put glue inside of this. So it's going to go right here. Wrong sides together. Wrong sides together, so it opens. They're really easy to make. They're not hard at all, so. I don't think you're gonna have any trouble with this. The so hot glue gun is your friend. And then I just took a piece of paper towel like this, pour it, and 
into strip pieces and just kind of made a, a little pillow. And that's going to fit right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue in there. Put my little cushion. And that kind of gives it that mound. So now remember we made this longer so we can pull it over. So we know it's going to be a little bit long and we'll be able to trim that. But first I'm going to trim some of this. So that Come a little bit off the bottom, just a bit. It's better to go too big so you can and you can always trim back rather than going too small and having a chance of it not fitting. So this is going to go over this. Now mine's a little bit back, so I have to trim some of this back. And just keep working with it until you have a good fit. Like that. I think we can trim a little bit of this one. We'll trim a little bit of that. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can fit it on there. First I'm going to match up this side and then I'll pull it over. And we can always trim this off so if we have to but we want it to kind of lay down a little bit so it's kind of down trim that So we'll start on this side, right here. Now I didn't leave, an, you'll have to make this longer if you want it to tuck over. This isn't really long enough, but we're just gonna start right there. Put a line of glue up there. Line it up. with the bottom. Once you get it around, see I probably shouldn't have cut that, but I'm just going to cut this right here.
and it's going to come around and make like a little strap. Or you can cut it shorter if you if you don't want it that long. So I might just cut mine a little bit shorter. Or I'll cut it, let's see. something like that. I'm just going to push mine to get some of that hot glue out of there. Now you just need your bottom piece. So again, right, okay, so here, we'll fit him on there, show you what I do. So we've got a piece of leather, we're just going to glue his bottom of his shoe, like that. And so I'll just trim this. I'll make the second one. Put a little button on there. You've got your boot. So we'll make him a couple of furry boots. We'll make some nice fur boots for this one. You want to make sure they're the same height. This is this is taller, so I'm going to trim it down. Around it. 
And then you have your little boot. You can tuck this in if you want. I don't know if it's necessary, but I think I'm going to, just because I have a little bit extra. So we'll tuck that down. Like that. There you have your little no boots. Two little nail boots. And you can sit your gnome. And those glue them down. So I hope you liked the little gnome boot tutorial. It was kind of fun and it's really pretty quick to make these. So if you're gonna start making gnomes, you're going to need some nice little boots. So try my method. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Either leather, corduroy, ultra suede, flannel, whatever you have on hand. Just get your glue gun out, a couple toilet paper rolls, and get going. If you're if you're interested in getting more familiar with the elementals, if you really enjoy making these little guys and they bring you a lot of joy, that's what they are here for if you some people can actually see them on the other side of the veil and people who are very sensitive and psychic but um, or have a highly developed intuition and um, if you want to know more about these little guys I have a couple of books I'd like to suggest and one is any book by the Findhorn Foundation they are in Scotland, and it's a, a group that started out with just three people, and they were very in tune with nature, and they started meditating and tuning in to the elements, and they were able to grow the most beautiful gardens in the world, like cabbages like this big, and they were growing it in really horrible sandy soil that no one else wanted to deal with. So they were um, working with the elementals, which fairies, gnomes, leprechauns, trolls, and um, fauna, they're all part of that realm. But I, I picked up this book summer with the leprechauns and I've and I just start I've been reading it I'm about halfway through right now but I'd like to read you just a little piece of it to see if it's piqued something of interest that you might want to look into so they the elementals guidelines for manifesting are in here it's a whole lot of things but I'm just going to read one if humans could raise their vibration and see the lighter vibrations and life force in all living things, they wouldn't be harming the world the way they have been, killing streams, trees, and other life forms. So as human beings become more conscious, they become lighter and more porous. This is by Tannis Hallowell, and it was written quite a while ago but she took a trip to Ireland and spent some time in a little cottage that was haunted. And there was a little leprechaun family living in there. And this leprechaun was there to teach her some lessons. She was able to see them very easily and because um, she was a very sensitive soul. So if you're interested in reading more about them, pick up one of those books and you're gonna really get 
a nice education on how to work with the elementals because they can help our gardens grow. And all they want to do is help us bring more peace and beauty into the world. So they work with God, the angels, the higher ups, and um, really quite fascinating.